On this edition of Around BCC, we profile a BCC alum with extensive business experience who has changed careers. And it's the holiday season. We show you how the BCC community is in the giving mood this time of year. We'll show you how to make a holiday culinary treat and our students seek out what's best about this time of year. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Thibault. Another year is about to wrap up and there's much to be appreciative of here at Bristol Community College. We're going to start this episode with the latest edition of Alumni in Your Community. James Mathis is well known here in the South Coast as being the longtime president of the New Bedford Area Chamber of Commerce. He has since moved on to serve as executive director of the South Coast Mentoring Initiative or SMILES. And more importantly, he credits BCC with much of his success. My name is Jim Mathis. Uh, I graduated from Bristol Community College in June of 1983. In 1979, when I got out of the Navy and I settled here and I made this decision to go back to school, uh, I think I actually enrolled expecting that I wouldn't do well. And there are probably a lot of people who are like me who didn't do well in high school, but they did get through. They got their, either they got their high school diploma or they got a GED. But they're not sure if they can really, you know, go to college and, and do well in college just based on personal experience. When I talk to people about Bristol Community College, I, I tell them that it is, it, you know, I think the slogan is something along the lines of it's a place where people can change their lives for the better. And uh, that absolutely is the experience that I had. It was a defining moment in my life. It uh, took someone who always had the ability to learn, but just for various reasons, immaturity, maybe too lazy at the time, didn't learn when I was supposed to when I was in high school. But uh, that when I you know, was grown up and got my feet under myself and uh, more serious about life th that I in fact could. And I did. I continued and I uh, kept taking classes uh, evenings uh, until I got my degree in business administration. I got out of the Navy uh, in, the, in the fall of 1979. I actually was still in the Navy when I enrolled in that first class but knew I was about to get out. Um, and was very lucky in, in December uh, was hired by an organization, uh, Junior Achievement of Greater New Bedford. was a big break for me, uh, a real opportunity. What struck me very quickly is I uh, continued at BCC and took, and took other classes in business and finance was how relevant what I was learning was to the work I was doing. I would bring things from school to home to study and prepare for a test and then to work so that I could use those very same textbooks for things that I was doing in my office. Setting up financial systems for a small nonprofit, how I might handle business management issues, um, uh, personnel issues, legal issues. While I got my start at Junior Achievement, I really think I matured professionally at the Chamber. Um, it, it was, as much as I enjoyed it, I, I spent the first two years pretty much scared to death. I mean, it was an awesome responsibility for somebody I felt my age with my background, um, and so while, I mean, I, I think I knew I was capable of it, by the same token, it was so new to me, and there was a lot of responsibility, not, you know, just the organization, but other people who worked with me that I felt you know, a lot of responsibility to as well. As the chamber evolved uh, during my years there, um, the issues that mattered most to New Bedford and not just businesses but to New Bedford were issues we were willing to work on and that we did work on whether those might be doing what we could to help economic development agencies attract new industry to the area or if we have a problem with not enough kids finishing school what kinds of things can be done to help more kids f do better in school and, and graduate from high school at least and go on uh, in public safety issues. Um, it, it always felt good to me 
if I'd go home at the end of the day and know that while we, you know, you never, when you're trying to do something to improve a community, you don't fix it. I mean, um, people's perception is that you do, but you don't fix it in a day. You try to make the circumstance better. You try to move the needle one way or the other. Uh, and most days when I went home, I felt we were doing that. First and foremost was coming to the realization that education is not just an issue for a school superintendent and a school department. Educating uh, the youth in a community is the job of the community. The schools, yes, is that the primary place? Absolutely. But everybody has to have a stake in it. And so I wanted to find ways that the chamber could appropriately become involved. And after doing quite a bit of research on it, what seemed appropriate was a mentoring program. And we started SMILES now, it's been about four and a half years ago, as a pilot program at Normandon Middle School in Keith. Uh, after three years of the pilot, we're taking a look at you know the impact it had on the kids being mentored with respect to their attendance, their conduct, and their educational performance in school, their grades, it works, which shouldn't be a surprise because the research said it would. Around that time, I uh, had someone in a conversation where we're talking about who we're going to get to lead this, someone who uh, looked at me and said, well, what about you? Um, and I think I knew as soon as that question was phrased to me that, um, that I was going to do it. But I still need, there were still family and friends that I needed to talk to, people at the chamber. I know there are other people who feel as strongly about this as I do, but no one feels stronger about it than I do. And as I began to think of, of who I was at that stage, which is a little over a year ago in, in uh, early 2006, I was somebody who had experience in running a nonprofit, someone who had a, a real passion for this issue and, and understood why it's important and really wants it to succeed, and who has a lot of contacts. And so while there may be other people who could do this and do this well, I just had a lot of things available to me that other people didn't. Um, and then the last piece that came together was when I realized that, that if I didn't try, um, I'd regret it. Where at the chamber I might be working on many different things, many different issues that are diverse. Some days in New Bedford, some days in surrounding towns, some days maybe in Boston. It's not the same here. You know, the work that I'm doing here is intended to impact the behavior and the educational performance of kids who, who, uh, who can use somebody in their life to help them, along with the others who are already there helping them, to enhance their success, their educational success. And to do that with one kid and then another kid until we get to 3,000. And then sustain that from now on, it's never something we're going to be able to walk away from, so that I can look back at, at some age, I don't know how old I'll be, and feel like, okay, this worked and we'll be able to measure that it worked by the fact that it changed a circumstance. And I know that there are going to be a lot of today's children who will be adults 10 years from now um, who, will be go who will go to BCC and who will have the opportunity to have the exact same kind of thing happen to them that, did, that happened to me at BCC. BCC changes lives. It takes someone, you may be doing okay. I mean, it wasn't like I wasn't doing okay, I was. But put you in a circumstance where you can, in fact, make a really good life for yourself and find work that you really enjoy instead of work that you just need to do. And there's a big difference there uh, in terms of, of one's quality of life. The goal of SMILES is to mentor 3,000 students in New Bedford and Fall River. Mathis and his organization is well on its way to achieving that benchmark. The holiday season is a time for all of us to reflect on what is good in our lives. But for some, based on their circumstances, finding something that is good is difficult. The BCC family takes note of this each year and tries its best to help out those who may be less fortunate. The BCC community each year tries to do its part in helping those who face challenges during the holiday season. Through the college's campus ministry, students, faculty and staff can seek assistance as well as help those in need. Director Sister Cynthia Bauer says one of those opportunities is through the college's giving tree. 
Students who are needy, want to provide for their families, are uh, familiar with the Giving Tree. So they make requests about two weeks in advance of, of uh, Thanksgiving and let us know what they need for their children, the sizes, the item, toys, whatever the need might be. And then they, um, we gather those and we make ornaments, give them a number, and then they remain anonymous and don't have to uh, be known as a needy person on campus. Staff as well have presented some uh, requests for their families, especially single moms who are trying to raise a large family have been the ones primarily giving the requests. Sister Cynthia says, unfortunately, the cost of living has made 2007 an especially needy year for some. Trying to supply for their family food and shelter, a warm home, as well as an education and clothing has become increased in, in uh, the amount that they have to spend to supply for those needs. So that, that has been an indicator, I believe, in bringing the, the needy more frequently to, to shelters I've seen in New Bedford uh, for food, pantries, needing meals, and providing for their families. The deadline for donating to the Giving Tree is December 10th. After that date, all donations will go toward the purchase of food vouchers that will be distributed at local social service agencies. Sister Cynthia says her satisfaction comes in spreading the word of Christ, and it's often appreciated by those who receive the help. They may not write the thank yous after, but you know initially when they receive the gifts how grateful they are. Yeah. So they, they, they are very humbling. You know, to ask for something is, is not easy for people. And I think that it's, you know, a, a, very, a gesture on their part is acknowledged with a, a dignity, you know, that they are entitled to. For those of you who wish to still donate to the campus ministry efforts here on campus, you can give Sister Cynthia a call at 508-678-2811, extension 2247. For most of us, we spend the holidays with family, friends, and food. What better way to get ready for the season than by spending some time with the BCC Culinary Arts Program as they show us how to prepare a sweet holiday treat. Happy holidays and welcome to Bristol Community College's Baking Department. I'm Gloria Cabral. I am the Baking and Pastry Instructor here. And this is my assistants, our second year students, is Danielle Durrett and Rose Diamond. We're here, we're going to be making our traditional Yuletide uh, log. It's called the Bush de Noel. Very simple and elegant dessert to entice your table. Here we have a sponge cake. Danielle will start. And the sponge cake is a dry cake but with a little bit moisture in it and what we have to do is add a little simple syrup and flavoring. That gives us a little bit more shelf time on it and adds to the flavor. This one is a Grand Marnier simple syrup which she'll add onto that for flavor. Can I have a spatula please? The flat spatula. Quickly that's fine. There you go. Very important to add flavor to your cakes and add your own little style. She's going to add a little bit of Grand Marnier uh, frosting. This is very simple by just taking your plain frosting, your favorite recipes, and adding in some nice liqueur. You can add any flavors you want. We do traditional peppermint stick. Uh, we have a nice eggnog flavor. We're just putting a thin layer so when we cut it, it won't all ooze out. On top of that, she'll add, add some nice strawberry filling. This is a typical strawberry filling that you can buy in a can in your local grocery store or make your own. You can add other flavors, lemon, raspberry, a nice jam that maybe you've made and you want to show other people, you know, how well it came out. And There you go, just putting it right to the edges. We'll just add a little bit more on your edge. The offset, please. Okay, nice job. 
Now she's going to add the strawberry filling. And we're going to leave just about, we're going to go this way, so about an inch from the bottom. We won't put any in, so when we roll it out, it won't squeeze out. See? Very simple. Just think of all the things you can put inside of this. One of my favorite is peppermint schnapps with uh, crushed candy canes and a chocolate buttercream in there. Very good. Should I had you make one, Rose, because that would have been nice. Your eggnog one, which we know how much you like eggnog. <laughs> All the way to the edges here, please. Yeah, if you want, we can add just, you know, sometimes it's easier if you just take and just scoop right out into there. Make it a little bit easier. Yeah. That's why we use rubber gloves around here to protect the uh, food so there's no con cross contamination. Could you grab me a side towel, please? And just that corner right there. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now we left a little edge there. What I want to do is make sure I have a little bit of frosting just to hold it. And when we use our parchment paper underneath, we leave that under. So this way we can roll this nice and tight. See, that's what I'm saying. If you have too much filling, it'll ooze out. So we don't want to do that. And just keep tucking and rolling. And it gives you the nice log shape. Bring that one over here. Now Rose will do the fun part of covering the outside. This is where you can have the kids get involved with this. I'm gonna get this right on here. Carefully. And I put parchment all around the edges so I don't have to keep moving it over and over again. It can be frozen to work with or not. Now what we do back with the rubber gloves again, she's gonna just carefully cover the whole outside. She can start with the spatula and the rest because it's, it is a log and it gives you that nice veining look of the tree bark. And if you do it like this is in chocolate or other flavors, it's all right if she's got red in there, it'll add to it. Just put some on there and then take your hands and smooth it out really nice. Hey Danielle. That's good. Just think of how much fun the kids would be having doing this. And then by keeping the parchment on it, we just slide that out later and it keeps it nice and clean. Okay, you need some more? Just stick your hand in the bowl. That's fine. That's why we just put just enough so we're not going to put the bowl back with anything else. And if you get a little like that, don't worry about it. We'll just take off any of the big pieces because sometimes it happens, especially if you're using kit, having kids. I'll come in and I'll just maybe add the spatula to it, help it out. Because, you know, holiday is all about family and children and the fun of being together and having fun. We like to work our menus around the guests that are coming. See, it's nice and soft. How's that? How's that side? All right. And I'll come. All right, now you can take the gloves off, and I'll just finish this last bit here. And if you get everybody involved, they're going to enjoy it much more because now they know what's involved into making your desserts or making your food and how hard it is to prepare or how easy it is, and they can continue on with their family traditions. See? And then I'll take the slicing knife. Thank you. And I just like to trim, I'll put trim the edge just so you can see. Just a little bit on each edge, so it gives you a nicer look. We'll put that in a, and we get the other side. We never throw away the scraps. There's always somebody wanting to have a little bite of cake. Or we create other desserts with it. Carefully, I'll slide the parchment off. a nicer look or ed looking edge. You want to keep them looking uh, like a log. I'll need some fresh gloves, please. 
And what I try to do is give it the, you have that nice circular from the uh, motion from the jelly roll. I'm going to just take a little bit of chocolate and give it the rings of a log. See, count how many rings or how. Rings to a log is the age of a log. If it's a little in between, what we'll do is just add a little border. I'll do this side. Oops. Can we get a, a side towel, please? Sometimes the bag, they tend to come out of the bag. You just have to be careful. And what you do is just make sure it's twisted this way. Keep your bag up. And I'll put a nice little border. Just to give it the finishing touches. Okay, so that looks nice. It's very basic, but we always want to decorate it more because part of, you know, we eat with our eyes. And if it looks appetizing, you're going to enjoy it much more. You can make peas taste good. So just decorate them up a little bit. Here we have decorations made with marzipan. And marzipan's an almond paste that you can have the kids roll out and put a little look onto it. You can cut them as poinsettias, holly. And we like to make it look very traditional. Because Christmas is my favorite time of the year. And we like to have buffets. We like to our friends come over. And I'm sure everybody else enjoys it too. Or it just ha doesn't have to be Christmas. It could be any other year holidays that people celebrate. Put a little bit in the middle. Don't worry about if it has a little, this is confectionery sugar on it. Because afterwards we put, add a little snow. And this way it gives that, that whole happy holidays look. See, Danielle had made some nice mushrooms because every log in the woods has little mushrooms. They're made out of Italian meringue. And we just pipe them out, bottoms and tops, and we'll add to that. Dust the top with a little bit of cocoa. And give it a cute look. And we just piped out some trees, added some colored sugar that you can buy in the store. Or we just took sanding sugar and colored it with food coloring to give it a nice look. See? Everybody will enjoy to see this. And after they see it, they'll have a little cake. Could I have the, the um, confectionery sugar, please? Just give it a little tap of confectionery sugar for your snow on your traditional bush de Noel. And have a happy holiday. And glad you came to see us. Thank you. Chef Cabral and her students did such a good job that we'll probably see more of them as future editions of the show progress this academic year. We all have memories of our favorite holiday traditions and our BCC TV club thought it would be a good idea to have others on campus share their cheer in this month's Student to Student segment. Hi, I'm Leonard Cho and welcome to Student to Student. As we all know, it's the holiday season, and we were wondering what was on the minds of the students during the holiday season, so we asked some questions 
about the holiday season. And with that in mind, we're going to send it on down to our roving reporter and Ben. Okay. Now, what are your biggest holiday pet peeves? <laughs> holiday pet peeves? Holiday pet peeves. I have to buy too, too many presents and spend too much money. Not sure yet. Not sure yet. The commercially, are, clearly the holidays are, are driven by a commercial interest. It sucks all of the spiritual marrow out of the bones of our, of our holidays. You know, the, hanging out with your family and generating more and more goodwill uh, amongst your fellow man, this is the essence of a holiday. Um, and, uh, and I'm really sick of all the Christmas songs that suck. <laughs> I think one of, my, one of my pet peeves is when they start celebrating a holiday and the first one hasn't even happened yet. When one bulb goes out and the entire thing goes out, you have to go, oh, it's such a pain. Oh, putting out the lights outside because we've got creepers on the ground, bushes, so you have to put the lights on all those too. My mom's weird. Blackout on Christmas. Oh. When <laughs> all the lights go out. <laughs> no, you know, you don't, you don't, I don't like to ask for things, but when they give me something that I don't like, I'm like, okay, thank you. But I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> commercialization of Christmas. Uh, I have to say the mindless commercialization. It's the holidays. How can you have a pet peeve about the holidays? When all the eggnog has been bought at the stores and it's just an eggnogless Christmas, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. Now, what's your favorite Christmas special? Um, Target's 20% off. Uh, <laughs> 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 on stockings. <laughs> okay, l let me rephrase that. Christmas TV special. The one with uh, the dentist, Herbie the dentist uh, or whatever. Off the Red Nosed Reindeer. Yeah, but the one with the dentist. Yeah, the, that's the one. The yeah, abominable snowman. Abominable. Abominable, whatever. Ooh. I believe it's called a Christmas story. It's awesome. The one with the kid with his tongue stuck to the pole, yes. A Christmas story, yes. Yeah. Star Wars Christmas special. <laughs> I have to go with Star Wars as well. Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> Rudolph with the stupid little elf who wants to be a dentist. Of all things, I want to be a dentist. Charlie. His uh, name's yeah. Charlie. His name's Charlie. Yeah. Hermie? Hermie? It's Hermie. I was completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Not cracker on ice. Ooh. The commercial where Santa Claus is riding the razor. I think that's a tie between the uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer um, film and the Christmas story with the kid who gets his eyes shut up. Red yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, that that would be one of mine also, and everybody has, has said for um, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So there is a tie between that and uh, Christmas Story. Favorite holiday carol? Silent Night. Silent Night. Uh, uh, let me think about uh, this. I like Silent Night too, and there was one more. Uh, White Christmas, maybe. I really like Good King Wenceslas. Um, Silent Night, actually. The German version of Silent Night. <clears throat> and no, I can't sing any of it. I'd <laughs> what about you, Brad? Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, the third grade version. The Grinch Stole Christmas, the, uh, the, the, the song at the end, Fahu Norris. Fahu Norris, Fahu Norris. Silent night, holy night, oh, all is come. All is quiet. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but to me it's so delightful. Had a bright and shiny nose, like a light bulb. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows like a light bulb. With every something, something that falls. Christmas okay, card. my pet peeve is when people sing Christmas carols and they don't know the words. <laughs> That's all for Around BCC this month. I'm Keith Tebow. Please have a happy and healthy holiday season, and we'll see you in 2008.